banks are not usually associated with sustainable energy. But in Lucknow, India, a regional rural bank is proving that solar energy is not just good for the planet, but good for business too. By becoming the first mainstream bank in India to offer photovoltaic power systems along with credit facilities to its customers. Naresh Joshi, the head of Aryavart Gramin Bank, wanted his branches to avoid the inevitable power cuts and installed photovoltaic panels as a backup. The self-sufficiency of his branches when the grid failed inspired him with another idea. When I was moving around our branches, visiting them late hours, and coming back to Lucknow, I found that the villages all along the road are in total darkness. The lack of grid electricity is not just a burden for rural customers, but holds back their chance of a better living. Mr. Joshi realized that the same photovoltaic panels used by his bank's branches could provide four extra hours or more of light for its rural customers. Mr. Joshi approached Tata BP Solar to get hold of the technology. And that light makes all the difference, you know. It was the most important thing for a father who was a farmer working whole day in the field. When he came back home, this was one of the things he wanted that he should give to his son so that he can read. Aryavart Gramin Bank had the customer base and the purchasing power to spread the technology to Indian farmers. When the first bank displayed its solar light, the villagers spread the news. People were curious. People from surrounding villages, they used to come and stand here to look at the lamp, how it is burning beautifully with the solar power. The system is cheap to run, but expensive to buy. So Naresh Joshi mobilized the bank's resources to provide affordable loans and run credit camps where customers can sign up for a loan to buy a lighting system. About a thousand people were expected to sign up for the solar home system at this camp. In fact, twice that many signed up. This was a large investment for some farmers, but they began saving on kerosene immediately. The systems normally cost 14,500 rupees, that's 170 pounds, but Mr. Joshi struck a deal to reduce it to 13,500 rupees, 160 pounds. A deposit of 2,500 rupees, 30 pounds, by the householders means they can take out a loan from the bank over five years. In fact, they only pay 222 rupees, £2.60 per month. A solar system makes it possible for anyone running a business to stay open longer, so the local economy benefits. I used to use the old kerosene light before. Now with the solar light I can work longer and get more income as business has flourished. The kerosene lamp affected my eyes. The local photographer has been able to diversify from taking portraits. Now I can offer photo printing services and burn CDs. It's increased my income and I'm making other plans. When I have no customers, I can watch TV. I feel it's great with the amount of light after dusk. The children study and it's made our life more healthy as I can cook properly in the house and keep things tidy and clean. The solar boom is providing local employment opportunities and a training scheme encourages young people to go into the solar business. Thanks to the bank's business model, around 8,000 units are already changing lives. Today, even a small newspaper is not available in a village. They are now connected with the world. The number of Indian households that could benefit from a solar home system is vast, and Aryavart Gramin Bank could offer a model for making the technology mainstream. So it's with absolute pleasure that I introduce Mr. Joshi. Please, Mr. Joshi. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm really indebted to Ahidan Awards. Uh, who have brought me here. My thanks first go to Tata BP Solar, who have associated themselves with this program, and particularly Mr. Amit Kumar, who has come here, and my other friend, Mr. Dige, who has been here. Uh, we go with the presentation, Public Sector Bank, uh, where the Government of India contributes to its capital up to 50 percent, 
35 percent contribution is coming from sponsor bank that is Bank of India and the state government that is Uttar Pradesh state government contributes 15 percent. So, these are the Grameen banks have been set up in India from the year 1975 to help particularly the rural areas, people from rural areas that is the major thing. We give loans for all kinds of activities for production credit particularly for agriculture, small scale industries, rural artisans, these are our target areas. And now that the government of India and the Reserve Bank of India, both of them have made themselves uh, the financial inclusion is the buzzword now in India. Every bank has been asked to enroll as many people as possible to bring them in banking fold because despite 39 years of uh, uh, the banking being in so, uh, social area with uh, government control, uh, things have not moved to the way they wanted and therefore now it is sort of compulsory thing that we must enroll each and every person as a bank customer and therefore lot of new technologies are coming in for which we needed solar. To run our computerized bank branches also we needed solar and therefore we decided that we should go ahead with helping our people later on what you have seen just now in the film that we are already running few of our branches on solar power about 100 more branches of our bank we are going to put on solar power. My sponsor bank Bank of India has already put up about 150 branches on solar power. In my area of operation of the six districts of Uttar Pradesh, there are about 8500 villages of which 2500 villages do not get power at all. And therefore, we thought that we must do something about it. Our financial position that way is quite strong. Our bank is making uh, good profit from last year's profit about 2.37 million. It has increased to 7.27 million pounds. We have a customer base of uh, 2.1 million deposit accounts and 0.43 million advances accounts. We have 1445 employees and 289 branches. We are going to increase the number of branches to 306. Uh, what we found was with this kit, what you are seeing on the screen, the 35 watt panel uh, manufactured by Tata BP Solar in India, the two fluorescent light lamps, they are quite attractive in villages what they are seeing because they are backed by a reflector. This is something additional that this manufacturer has provided which others have not provided. They claim that the efficiency of the lamp increases by about 30 percent because of the reflector and people also feel it because they watch that if somebody is approaching in the night in a farm uh, which is not secure place or some serpents or other things the reptiles are there, they can watch them very easily. Therefore, the acceptance is so fast that today we have sanctioned about 20,000 loans, but then uh, the company is unable to supply the systems in such large quantities. They have supplied so far about 10,000 systems which have been installed. Another 10,000 will be shortly supplied and installed. Our aim was to provide about uh, 25,000 systems before our second anniversary of the bank. We started on 3rd of October 2006. By 3rd October 2008, we want to cover minimum 25,000 households, which we will be definitely doing. And not only that, my successor who has recently taken over from me, I have been transferred back to Bank of India. He also is having a lot of interest in this and I hope that our Aryavartians, they will spread this solar home lighting systems to more than 100,000 households. This system consists of, Tata BP has beautifully manufactured this system, 35 watt solar panel is there. It has to be cleaned almost daily or weekly to remove the dust particles. It is a low maintenance battery of 12 volt, a MCR charge controller so that the overcharging or undercharging does not take place and the lamps. This system totally cost about 13,000 plus government has added about 520 rupees as uh, tax on that. It can run two CFLs for minimum of 5 hours and it is with 3 days autonomy. If, even if sun is not there during winter or rainy season when the cloud cover is there, during that period for 3 days the battery has stored enough of sun power to run the system for 3 days. It supports additionally a mobile charger. In villages everywhere there are mobiles, but then charging these mobiles is a big problem. Then a small table fan runs on it, a black and white TV runs on it. We have brought in the farmer's house the entire world with this TV. The loan system uh, is made easy. What they pay back to us is about uh, less than what they spend on kerosene every month. This system you can see this progress. Uh, 
by providing about 25,000 systems, we will be enhancing our business only by 3.48 million. But the happiness that we will be getting, that 1,25,000 people getting uh, beautiful light, that is something great. That is what we work for. These are the, some of the advantages. It is maintenance free, no fear of burning, sufficient light for household goods, children can study in night, easy to handle, it is pollution free and TV and so many other things and we have provided additionally inbuilt thing is that we are appointed a business facilitator in these villages who gets local employment and we pay them about 10,000 rupees per year and they don't wish to migrate to cities anymore and they will work for people and these are the social benefits of the entire project. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Joshi. So from one inspiring project to another inspiring project from the Renewable Energy Development Project in Western China. For many farmers and herdspeople living in remote Inner Mongolia, China, grid electricity is a distant dream. For years, they have relied on kerosene and candles for lighting. Before the PV system, we only had a candle and lit an oil lamp, but now I can do housework and watch the TV at night. Now watching TV, I feel connected to the world and it's not so lonely up here. Now large and small companies are providing solar power systems for light. The now thriving industry has been kick-started across the country's remote regions by the Renewable Energy Development Project, REDP, a collaboration between the Chinese government and the World Bank. At the HQ in Jinin, Western China, Wu Dacheng is giving local manufacturers of home solar power the lowdown on sales across China. Photovoltaics is natural technology. But REDP's task is to commercialize the technology because the cost of the whole system is quite high and we use technical improvements to save energy to improve the quality and reduce the costs. REDP has helped install over 400,000 solar home systems by improving manufacturing standards and providing subsidies to distributors. The industry is becoming self-sufficient with companies now producing a variety of high quality and good value systems from home portable to larger units for the cities. But before our EDP, it wasn't easy. The company was established 10 years ago and at the beginning the main problem was that the end user didn't understand anything about solar power. They didn't believe it could deliver electricity. So we explained how it worked and how long it would last. There are many portable systems for different needs. Each system can run two lights, a radio and a phone charger. Larger systems can run a cassette or DVD player or a TV. REDP has also funded the development of innovative technologies. The products are sold in far-flung towns like Siziwangui in Inner Mongolia, where local distributors like Zhangjiang make systems available to herdsmen. Before, the people used candle and oil. They now use PV. I've sold 49 solar home systems so far in this area. The farmers pay 1,200 yuan, or 90 pounds, for the smallest system, the equivalent of 10 sheep. Now the solar light enables me to help with the birth of lambs at night. It's much easier all round. Nomadic yak herders move with their animals throughout the year, and PV systems can even bring safe, bright light to their tents. Solar lighting is safer and healthier than kerosene. REDP is confident that the systems will become cheaper as the market grows. There are 1.6 million people who have benefited from photovoltaic energy units here. 
Before PV was used, it was often difficult when the family got sick to call a doctor. Now with this energy, the doctor is only a phone call away. It's also convenient to store medicines in the fridge if someone is ill. As solar becomes mainstream throughout the world, programs like REDP can help those in remote areas who need it most to benefit from the technology. Now, because we have electricity, if something urgent happens, like if there's a need to call our daughter or we need to pick up a car to go to hospital, it's very convenient. High up in a Tibetan region of Qinghai province, this monk runs the shop in Kao Duo village on behalf of a nearby monastery. The village school too now has electric light thanks to the photovoltaic panels. REDP has already made a difference to the lives of the rural poor, but after the funded program ends, its power looks set to live on as a trade association backing solar. We'll continue our work by developing our association and provide more information and support to develop the market, not only domestic, but also international users who need this cheap technology. So it's my, it's my pleasure to introduce Louise Jinlian. I thank the Ashton Award to provide this opportunity. Therefore, we can share our experiments and look forward for future cooperation. So REDP uh, 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 is, uh, uh, is aimed to supply clean energy to rural area without any electricity. And we provide this, uh, uh, the, our support from quite different way because we uh, uh, pro provide grants for commercial sales and share the costs uh, for the company who, do, uh, who have uh, business uh, development and technical improvement. Uh, besides this, we uh, also uh, give some free support for, its, uh, for establishing the market framework. In the past six years, 1.6 million people benefit from our commercial sales. Uh, you can see from those that, uh, dark uh, area, and Tibet got the most benefits. And um, 190 projects, that's uh, market development projects, already been supported by our projects, uh, covered from advertisement, financial management, to training. Uh, more than 100 companies uh, have their technical improvement uh, supported by REDP, so now they can uh, research new kinds of products with better quality and low cost. Besides this, RDP established our own uh, PV technical standard testing laboratory and certificate center. Uh, besides this, we provide uh, professional uh, advertise, uh, uh, advice to local and central government. So now you can see uh, our, uh, our standard and certificate has been used in other PV projects, including some international projects. Uh, we also did several training workshops, exhibition, and study tour. So till now, more than 4,000 people benefit from these activities. Uh, so, uh, and for why we have this success, I think the most of all is because we have a potential rural market and the development of Chinese PV industry. And PM, uh, REDP provides a fair and positive business development. Of course, we choose a, a solar home system as the technologies. <coughs> Uh, moreover, we, we not provide this system for free. We, uh, we, uh, we do this by a commercial way. So the end user will protect their system well. And dealers will get their subsidy based on their sales performance. Uh, but uh, the more activity uh, sells more uh, subsidies. Company can go ahead without any hesitancy because REDP shared causes and risks with them. 
uh, we not sup only support end user, but also support the whole uh, industry chain from the government level, expert level, to uh, uh, dealers, uh, uh, suppliers, and end user. So a comprehensive and sound industry chain already been established. Um, in the future, uh, we plan to move from uh, provide a lot of support, especially financial support, to, uh, to uh, uh, provide some uh, consulting services um, by establishing a PV uh, industry association. Uh, because we have very good cooperation with PV, co PV companies, testing center, other products and organizations, so we will set up a business-to-business -business website. And we have a lot of, PV, uh, a lot of reports that you can see outside, and uh, especially this PV industry development report, we will, uh, uh, renew, uh, we will update it every two years. So we hope in 2009, we will have a new version of this report. So uh, this is the uh, end user from Tibet. Uh, he benefits from our projects and buy this solar home system. Thank you. So now we move on to uh, a winner of the Ashton Awards uh, two years ago in 2006 to the Grameen Shakri Bank in Bangladesh. Grameen Bank is famous for transforming the economic lives of the poor in Bangladesh. From the 19th floor of its Dhaka headquarters, its sister company, Grameen Shakti, is doing the same for access to electricity for the 100 million Bangladeshis who are not connected to the grid. And in the last two years, it's also had huge success introducing other sustainable technologies. Grameen Shakti won an Ashton Award in 2006 for its work and is the winner of the 2008 Outstanding Achievement Award. At the time of the 2006 award, Grameen Shakti had installed 65,000 systems, but now it's installed over 150,000. Since 2006, if you see our map, we have at that time around 200 branch services. Right now we have a 400, it's double in the network and also the installation rate. In 2006, 2,000 systems per month. Now we're installing more than 6,000 systems per month. So is a, every year we're breaking our record, is a exponential growth. Key to its success is the Grameen Shakti network. Through its regional offices and local branches, it not only promotes its technologies, but makes them affordable by carefully calculating loans with a realistic payback period. Staff are locally recruited, so they have links with the communities they work in. And word has now spread to every district of Bangladesh of the new possibility of life with electricity. A solar system means a developed life. Because of it, life is easier. We can do sewing and our children can study with the solar light. We don't have to go to a distant place to charge the mobile phone. We can do it at home. It has also opened Grameen Technology Centres, where new solar users are taught how to get the most from their systems and technicians are trained in maintenance and how to assemble components locally. Supplies used to come to us from Dakar, which took a long time, and sometimes people had to wait for their solar power systems to be installed. But now, thanks to Grameen Technology Centers, everything is available all the time. In Bangladesh, it's rare for a woman to be seen alone outside the home, even less have a job. But Grameen Shakti has trained over 1,000 technicians and most of them are women. Lots of people are curious about my work. For them it seems very difficult and unusual for an uneducated rural woman. And they ask me, how did you learn this work? And I tell them I learned it here at this Grameen Technology Centre. She produced around uh, 30 pieces per day. So earning in a month is around 7,000 taka, is around 100 US dollar. We are involving women 100%. At the same time, we are training the women to spread this technology in the community level. Some of the trained technicians 
have now become solar entrepreneurs. Working from home, they are able to earn a good wage assembling parts and providing local customer service. They are, in effect, mini franchise holders to spread the Grameen Shakti brand. It's really satisfying. I like it when all the installation is finished. The charge controller shows the electricity is connected and the light comes on. It's a pleasure for me because I was the one who made it happen. <laughs> With 150,000 solar units installed to date, rural business is also being transformed. The Bellis market, we have a lot of shops, no electricity here. So we put solar home system. Now they have another four hours, five hours, extension of working hours, and they run a television and also lights. This is the income generation. They're renting light to other neighboring shops. At the end of three years, they become the owner of the system, and they can continue for 25 years, 30 years. Before we had light, my daily takings were 1,500 taka. Now I'm making an extra thousand every day. But the spread of solar power systems may soon be overtaken by the improved cooking stove. Most people in Bangladesh and the developing world cook on an open fire or a traditional stove like this. The smoke and heat cause health problems for mothers and children. Everything is coated with soot and there's often a steep monthly firewood bill. But after talking to other Ashton Award winners at the 2006 ceremony, Deepal Barua decided to introduce a better stove to Bangladesh. These stoves use half the fuel and take smoke and heat safely out of the kitchen. And they cook faster too. The stoves are cheap, only 700 taka or five pounds. And within six months, the cost of the stove is paid back in fuel savings. There's no smoke, no blackening and no heat. Before that it was so troublesome, frustrating and tiring. Now it's good, no health problems. The stoves are also popular with small businesses, like this roadside restaurant. As well as saving on firewood, customers prefer to eat in a smoke-free environment. There's a real need for this technology, and thanks to the existing Grameen Shakti Solar Energy Network, the organization has been able to move fast. So we can minimize the cost, same infrastructure for the solar we can use for the uh, improved cooker stove also. So we started just uh, one year before, now we install 15,000. I think this is a big future waiting for us and I would like to build uh, within seven, eight years another 10 million uh, improved cooker stove in Bangladesh. For those with a few cattle, there is another option on offer a biogas system that produces clean burning methane from cow dung. With biogas on tap all the time, there's no need for fuel wood at all. And for farmers, the byproduct, organic residue, is a great fertilizer. It replaces expensive chemicals and is reported to improve crop yields. In this fish farm, it's even used instead of fish feed. Before, in six months, a fish would grow to about 250 to 330 grams. And now it's about 500. The output of the larger biogas plants is enough for the surplus to be sold on by piping it to neighboring houses. Everybody wins as the neighbors save on fuel wood and their payments for gas cover the biogas owners' costs. Grameen Shakti's unique community-based business model puts affordable energy within the reach of the world's poor, when many would think it impossible. We have to try, and it's doable from our experience. In Bangladesh, one of the developing country, poor country, but still we are doing fine, and it is a viable, it is a green energy. We are contributing to the planet. I advise try to figure out what are the difficulties and solve one by one, and they can develop the program in other countries. Truly, truly inspiring. It's an absolute pleasure to welcome Dipal back as this year's Outstanding Awards winner. Dipal, please explain to us how you do it. Uh, thank you very much, and I'm very uh, happy and excited to come back again after two years here, and in Imperial College also. Uh, some of our activities sure. through video, but still I like to explain. Uh, we started in uh, 1996, Grameen Bank started in 1976. 
Professor Yunus, who is the uh, founder of the bank. I am also a, uh, one of the co-founder in other way. In, in my own way, as Grameen Bank started in 1976. I was a student at the University in Economics Department. And then gradually, we involved with the bank. And finally, in 1996, we started Grameen Shokti. Shokti means energy. Sometimes it also empowerment. Our mission is to empower rural people with access to green energy and income. And we now work all over Bangladesh, more than 400 field offices and over 2,000 staffs. And in Bangladesh, uh, uh, energy staff country, 145 million people living in Bangladesh, 40% have access to grid line and in the rural area only 20%. Rural people use kerosene lamps and cook with biomass causing health, environmental and economic problems. So we are trying to activate some programs such a way so that the, what are the potentials in Bangladesh and what are the barriers to change. We see the solar is a high upfront cost, lack of consumer financing and lack of knowledge and awareness and lack of efficient cost effective after sales services. So these are the main barrier for the solar energy. We thought how to address and we are grew up in a microcredit situation. So we have we are deeply involved with microcredit so we know how to financing rural poor people. So we started a financing. And and also this is a market based approach to reach rural people through local technology transfer. One community participation and awareness raising. This is our women engineers, technician, all is uh, try to uh, uh, motivate and dissemination in the rural area and we have a flexible management, listen to ideas from the field and clients so then immediately we develop our own program and product dedicated and committed staff. Our engineers, electrical engineers or civil engineers, we train them as a social engineers. So because they have to deal with the women, they have to deal with the illiterate people in the rural area and we have a strong internal audit system that auditing of the quality of the services. Otherwise, people will not pay back. At the same time, we check the accounts, everything, so that every six months we have an inten intensive audit. Uh, training local technicians and entrepreneurs because gradually technicians, some of them technicians will be entrepreneurs and we are already 50 women become an entrepreneur out of 1000. So, we are hoping in the future there will be a lot of uh, flowers. Free maintenance and during repayment, low cost warranty afterwards. Three years loan, every month they are paying one installment. They save money from kerosene or diesel or firewood. They are paying to the Grameen Shukti. Our local technicians, engineers collecting money at the door level, at the household level. And we have no uh, cost uh, for maintenance because we are collecting three years. And then after three years, we sign an agreement the, uh, for 300 taka is around uh, $4 US dollar for one year. And we also develop some micro model, those are poor people, they are entrepreneurs but they are not able to buy the system. So we give them on credit and they are renting some light to the neighbors because Bangladesh is a highly densely populated. If you put the population of the world in the United States, the density will be equal or less than Bangladesh maybe. So in that way we take the advantage of this and micro -dilatives. So buy a system and they are renting light to others and they get a fee every night 5 to 6 taka and then at the end of the month they get around 2 dollar US dollar so it is a, a 1 pound uh, they are paying to Grameen Shukti. So eventually they became owner of the system but the system can continue up to 25 years and but within 3 and a half years they become the owner of the system. We have a, we develop uh, women uh, selling the services of mobile phone we buy the bulk at time from the mobile company and then selling the services to the other. Small solar system, home system for the poor people, only even a 100 US dollar, uh, 10 watt system, 15 watt system. We have a 20 watt system. So that's replaced the kerosene and candle. And the progress, uh, you see uh, in 2006, only 65,000. And we are proud to receive the SDN award. And this year, we are really happy, uh, excited, and wonderful event coming tomorrow, uh, outstanding achievement award. The growth in 1996 only few hundred, now gradually you see 160,000. And so uh, we are hoping we will cross this year uh, 200,025, 225,000. 
So, uh, it's growing uh, and we are planning now we in initially we have a plan we committed 1 million system by 2015 now we are planning to do it earlier in 2010. And we develop a Grameen technology centers this is very important because we are transferring technology in the rural area and we are 100 percent women and 1000 women trained in sustainable energy technology and they are earning 100 dollar per month and uh, main train is set up their own energy business in the rural area. So, we train them solar technician and also improve cooker stoves. We are moving beyond the PB. Uh, this biogas plant we started we inspired uh, every time if you come a uh, lot of categories as the award uh, there are the state of the art in biogas in improved cooker stoves and other sectors so we look uh, to all this seminar uh, very minutely and we take the advantage what are the potentials we do we have in Bangladesh so we configured according to our own situation so a biogas plant gas light electricity and also we producing gas for cooking and organic fertilizer for cultivation we have seen fish farm and everything and also we are producing electricity from the uh, poultry bart liters and also biogas plant from the cow dung. 3500 plants we are hoping within two years we will push such a way it would be like a solar program again. And improved cooker stuffs we have around 30 million demand household in Bangladesh. So, there is a sky is the limit. So, we started just recently. Uh, 15,000 install and we train technicians, manufacturing units for great chimneys and others and so I think we are saving 50 percent firewood and we are saving the uh, our mother's life. And our aim by 2015, 100,000 green jobs will create um, per month income around 100 dollar US dollar at the rural level it is a good income for them. So, this is our uh, uh, win-win situation we have a income for the women we have a saving uh, women's life at the same time producing green energy and also economic impact. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, I think uh, this is the uh, important questions the we are financing or we are maintenance. So, our people collecting. So, unless there is no light people are not going to pay. So, we started at six months and gradually two years now three years even gradually with resources available we can go for five years. So, the, they can save kerosene, saving money from kerosene and they can pay uh, installment of solar energy. Uh, we, we have a leaflet we printed at the cost of kerosene you can buy a solar home system. If someone is not paying the motivation and motivation, motivation is our source. So, we are training that way. Uh, uh, so, for 10 years we survive, hopefully we will survive more than 20 years. Thank you. W would anyone else like to? Uh, say the, what we have done is that when we structured our scheme to begin with, we thought that we should give it to our existing good clients with proven track record in the repayment. Initially, we have started with that. Later on, we can expand it to others also. But then, one who has been good to bank, uh, we thought that we must give it as a matter of reward. And then I don't feel that there will be defaults. But nevertheless, what we have done is that for every 100 systems, we have appointed a man called business facilitator. We call it Hindi Suvidha Data. He helps the people in maintaining the system. He collects the installments also. We have cable TV operators in India where uh, the, uh, the man goes from house to house and if there are any problems, the householder would not pay him the monthly fee. till. Uh, the system is set right, the cable TV system is set right. So, that sort of system we have evolved, adopted for our own model. We have given them cards to these business facilitators. They go to collect the monthly installment, which is slightly lesser than what they spend on kerosene, what Mr. Baru was telling. So, there is no additional cost for them. With this same cost of kerosene, less than the cost of the kerosene, they are getting better light for 5 hours and with 3 days of autonomy. And therefore, there won't be any defaults. That is what I feel that we have got to trust in people. See, the banks in developing world particularly, we have to go to people. Not the, that people have to come to the bank. That has to be our motto. That is what Bangladesh Private Bank has ably demonstrated and what the network of private <coughs> banks in India is doing today. It is a great job for the rural people and we trust in them, have faith in them and they will not fail us. Thank, Thank you. you.
Okay, so if I can just, uh, because the, not everyone can hear from the back. So the question was, what level of defaults do you have? And then the follow-on question was, do any of you use carbon financing credits? Uh, we have right now not thought about carbon credits so far, being a bank. Our business gives us good, up, good enough money right now. It's okay. Uh, but then, uh, when uh, what uh, we will be investing, all the banks in India, basically in the rural areas, we have large network of branches. Uh, about 34,000 bank branches are existing in the rural areas. Now each of these bank branch, there is a power shortage and then they will be required to install PV modules. What I have done in my bank, it has inspired my sponsor bank to install 150 branches in the rural areas are being run on this solar PV system with uh, 1.32 kV pan, uh, power capacity or 2 kV power capacity also. So that 8 to 10 computers can be run on this PV. With this kind of investment, definitely, uh, we'll be applying our mind for this carbon credits. Uh, maybe a bank, bigger banks like Bank of India, and even a smaller bank like Arya or the Grand Bank can do it. Yeah, I'm from IDP China. I'm Wang Wei. Uh, uh, IDP in past uh, six years has did a lot. Uh, the, in past, we didn't consider CDM, but maybe in the future it could be possible. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, actually, the default rate uh, education is important part because we are supposed to four light, one television point, one uh, mobile phone charger. Some of them uh, uses fan and fan exhausting, so then uh, uh, the battery is three days autonomy. Sometimes it's not working. So we have a. Uh, customer uh, training uh, and also 100% customer gradually we are providing training so that reduce the uh, default and also sometimes people if a flood or cyclone or anything uh, sometimes they cannot pay so we have around 98% recovery and once you motivate them if they are not able to pay we have a buyback system someone is say oh I cannot continue so uh, after discounting battery and lamp we pay the money cash money so the after uh, the buy buyback system that bring the confidence in the customer's level. So it's also a, a kind of safeguard. Otherwise, if you return the system, it's more expensive, more uh, profitable because we bought earlier the system was cost less. Now the price is gradually a little bit increasing. So if you return the system, we can sell it to other customer much more easily. <laughs> Regarding the CDM, Clean Development Mechanism, I gave a name critical development mechanism. It takes time, four years, five years to conceptualize. You know. Finally, we signed agreement for one million system with World Bank, uh, World Bank through World Bank, and then uh, we are waiting for the CDM board. Even in Bangladesh, to convince the government, it takes years together. Finally, we got all certification, call it DNA, Designation National Authority, they agreed. And Bangladesh part is over now, we are waiting for CDM board. Then we will get a nine euro per ton of carbon emission. It still is a dream. Nothing happened in real life. So this is the... the so the question was how long do the lead acid batteries last? We prefer not to think of our guests as contestants. <laughs> uh, we use actually deep cycle battery, call it tubular battery, uh, is a, a suitable for the solar. Uh, normally supplier give us a five years guarantee, but we uh, convince the customer through education it can continue up to eight years and now we are negotiating before that it was only uh, small say five taka, 500 taka is around uh, four five dollar now we convince the supplier they have to give around 25 dollar so once they return we pick it up from the customer at the grassroots level wellness level we deposit to the supplier they get uh, around 25, 30 dollars. So this is an uh, extra income for the customer. So and the uh, and the disposal of the battery is good if you collect through the big industry and uh, environment friendly way. So I think uh, normally it's five years, but many cases it's six, seven, eight years also. And we are financing again to a six month loan for buying another new battery. Thank you. Uh, we have recently started this experiment, uh, so we don't have much experience, but what manufacturers claim is that the battery will last minimum for 4 to 5 years, minimum. 
it can work as he says up to 8 years also maybe i don't know we have to uh, see the actual performance but nevertheless there are no problems uh, about the battery they, they are quite good the standard because what uh, supplier we identified in india out of about 132 manufacturers of solar equipments who are listed on tradeindia.com we identified tata bp because they have name they bother for their name they bother for their everything the tata brand itself that has been built over the years that helps us and the customers to have that confidence in some cases the batteries were found to be weak immediately they were replaced and we have no problem as a banker our job is only to finance but basically we have gone a step ahead and uh, we have created a path for other bankers to follow that some say similar uh, initiative that they take they will be appreciated although whether our regulators would like it or not i don't know but then somebody has to make a beginning and that is what we are done Uh, yes, for REDP, uh, uh, the customer will buy the, the whole system uh, paid by cash. And uh, after two or three years, when the battery already uh, uh, destroyed, they, uh, some of them will re uh, take, uh, pick it back to uh, our dealers and uh, uh, buy a new one. Yeah. Okay, so the, the, the question was, as you are donor funded in in some part what happens when the funding runs out how do you how will you keep the the, the project going uh, yes uh, we, we got uh, this uh, our uh, grant from GEF actually uh, from the global uh, development facility and now uh, till now we already uh, 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 implement um, more than six years and this uh, actually this month this project will be finished and uh, uh, after that th that's why we want to establish a PV uh, industry association to continue our uh, uh, those work we already done actually uh, uh, in the uh, uh, in the past the six year we already did a lot of things like uh, PV uh, industry association and we have very good cooperation with uh, testing laboratory and organi uh, organization and other um, PV companies or governments so we, we can do this kind of things to keep this uh, sustainability it's, uh, uh, important question and, uh, and now uh, we have a lot of visitors uh, visiting us so we open a international cooperation department and recently one of our uh, friendly organization from USA they are supporting us so we are uh, replicating in uh, Liberia so we send our engineers and they study and recently we started a uh, solar program and uh, improve cooker stoves in Liberia so and then uh, Tanzania and other country also visiting us so this is in a uh, where it's not only the solar is a financing is a management is a monitoring is a product development so all are even a cdm is a in, a, in integrated so that the energy product can be a viable so we are supporting we are helping others to uh, try this idea in other places thank you thank you very much i think we we owe our guests a round of applause We have some final announcements before you're allowed to go to lunch. Okay, thank you very much, Jeremy. Could I also take the opportunity to thank the people that have chaired the sessions today and particular thanks also to two members of the Ashton Awards team who have helped make this, who have really made this seminar happen. That's Mike Pepler down here and Dave Howie, who is behind the scenes doing all the um, IT side. So thank you very much as well.